Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Desiree and you are watching episode five of Journey to Tuck. On today's video, we have a very special guest. I am doing a question and answer with my surgeon, Dr. Corindian. I went to go meet with him, see his work, and just get in touch with him, meet his staff, and they were awesome, by the way. But at the end of the appointment, he asked if I had any questions, and I didn't really know what to ask. So, the first things that came to mind were, A, being 25 years old, is this kind of stupid to go through with a tummy tuck this young? B, am I going to do a vertical or horizontal tummy tuck? And C, do I have loose enough skin for it? And I know that was like kind of a weird question. And he was like, yes, you've lost 150 pounds. Of course, your skin is loose enough for it. So, you know, you never know. Um, it's my first time kind of going through any of this kind of stuff. So I'm just learning as I go and I'm trying to pick up as many pieces as I can. So I asked for you guys' help in asking questions for Dr. Corindian since I obviously cannot come up with any on my own. So these questions that Dr. Corindian answers today are all from you guys. So thank you. Thank you so much for helping me along this journey. I know we are just getting started and I am so grateful to not be doing this alone. Hope you guys like this video. Let's listen up closely and hear what Dr. Corindian has to say because he is so much better at answering these medical related questions than I am. So here we go. Hi, this is Dr. Corindian from DesiredBeauty.com. We've got a number of questions that were sent to us. These are very common questions that uh, everyone wants to know about tummy tuck. So we want to go over with you some of these questions uh, and answer them for you. So they had asked me if you plan to have kids in the future is tummy tuck beneficial or should you wait till later in life it's obvious that with tummy tuck what we're repairing is stretched skin and stretched muscle we're removing the stretched skin after a tummy tuck someone gets pregnant obviously that muscle and that stretched skin that was removed uh, they're being stretched again so I would definitely recommend anyone who's interested in tummy tuck wait till after they've had all their kids. That doesn't mean that because you had tummy tuck, you cannot have children again. Unplanned pregnancy can happen. After a tummy tuck, it's obviously it's okay to have kids. You're able to have kids. But the result may not be as good as when you had your tummy tuck you may get some of the skin and muscle re-stretched again but obviously it may get stretched and it varies from person to person will the skin bounce back after pregnancy definitely does it varies from person to person and which number pregnancy it is that's why I always recommend anyone who wants to have a tummy tuck they don't want to do it right after childbirth because you want to allow a few months for your skin the elasticity of, of your own skin to take action and retract your skin and we'll, we'll see after a few months what you're left with usually the first three months definitely a no-no i would recommend everyone to wait about six months after childbirth to see how much of their skin and muscle retracts and then whatever we're left We'll see what type of treatment is best to take care of remainder of loose skin. Okay, Dr. Karindian, so what can you do in order for not to ruin the work that the surgeon has performed? Okay, after a tummy tuck or liposuction, basically the two things that is going to reverse the improvement that we have made is gaining weight. After a tummy tuck or liposuction, when a person goes out of the way and they feel that like they got tummy tuck and they're not going to gain weight, that's not true. It may not happen in the subcutaneous tissue, but it will happen intra-abdominally and the result will not be as good if someone gains weight regard to tummy tuck, pregnancy can reverse some of the improvement that were made during surgery. If you were to get pregnant or if you did not take care of the work that was performed by the surgeon, can you have a revision later on in the future? Definitely a revision of tummy tuck is possible. We do quite a bit of that. But one thing I want to make sure everyone understands, the best result from a tummy tuck is going to be your first surgery. So please, everyone, make sure that you go to the best doctor that can do the best job 
the first time because revision of tummy tuck even though we get a lot of uh, patients uh, from other physicians that uh, they haven't done their best work uh, we can improve the result but the first time you can get the best possible result ever okay we had another question from uh, a young lady they're asking me if if it's better to get a big mommy makeover where they do tummy tuck, breast augmentation, breast lift or reduction, butt lift and multiple procedure or is it safer to do one procedure at a time? This is a very common question and everyone that comes to consultation they say well I'm under anesthesia, uh, can you do my breast lift while you're doing my tummy tuck? The, key point that everyone needs to pay attention is that it's so much safer to have a patient under anesthesia for a shorter time than a longer time. Having said that, obviously we have to spend all the time to get the best job for that surgery and the best job cannot be performed by a fast or short surgery. You have to spend the time uh, for meticulous work needs to be done to get the best result. At the same time, we don't want to keep the patient under anesthesia for an extended period of time because as time goes on, usually beyond five, six, seven hours, the risks of anesthesia and complications increases. So it's so much safer to do two shorter surgery than one very long sur surgery. And a lot of surgeons that do multiple procedures at the same time, obviously they have to keep the time shorter, so they may not be able to do all the meticulous work that each procedure requires. So I don't want to cut corners uh, when I'm taking on a surgery. I want to do the best job and uh, I want to keep the patient safe. Safety is number one. We can do the number of procedure that we can achieve in the time that is right for that person. And that time varies for person to person, depending on their health status, their age, and the other medical conditions that they have. We had another good question. Um, do you recommend getting liposuction on any part of the abdomen while getting a tummy tuck? Um, the most important issue that a surgeon should pay attention during a tummy tuck is the vascularity of the flap, the abdomen, the skin that is remaining that is requiring a certain vascularity and blood supply for proper healing of the tummy tuck incision. When a liposuction is done in certain part of the abdomen, it jeopardizes the healing by reducing the vascularity of the flap. So there is certain part of the abdomen that are forbidden to have liposuction during tummy tuck but there are other areas like the waist and the flank that it's okay to do liposuction at the same time with the tummy tuck but the front of the abdomen that area carries a lot of risk that is unnecessary so it should always be forbidden during tummy tuck and uh, as part of the same question, I was asked whether a, a pubic area can be helped to get a lift during a tummy tuck. And that is part of the procedure, part of the same incision that can, we can incorporate the pubic lift, which has a lot of loose and laxity of the pubic area, and to incorporate that into the tummy tuck incision. So you will not have extra scar. You can do a pubic lift during your tummy tuck safely without additional incision. So another young lady uh, was ask, uh, asking us this question. How do you determine if you're going to have a vertical or horizontal incision for your tummy tuck? How far around the incision will go? And uh, when is the abdominal muscle repair required? Um, basically, uh, regarding whether the incision is vertical uh, or horizontal, basically a horizontal incision is 
falling in the pubic line or infra abdominal fold where we call it bikini line and that's the most common incision for a tummy tuck and we try to always get away with only that incision because it's an incision that is very easily can be hidden and about I would say 95% of the tummy tuck will only require that incision However, with a lot of people who have had bariatric surgery or have gone through an extensive amount of weight loss, their abdominal laxity is not only in up and down fashion, but also in this direction where they have a lot of excess skin in the medial to lateral direction. Those that have that and they want improvement in tightening around the abdomen, in addition to the horizontal incision, they will require a vertical incision in the midline of the abdomen also. So that's something that I usually discuss with the patient. Uh, some of the patients that have gone under open bypass or open abdominal bariatric surgery, they already have the midline incision, so it's easier decision for them. But for those that have extensive laxity in both direction, it's something that we'll discuss and see if they're a candidate for the vertical incision. Who uh, requ requires a muscle repair is basically anybody that has had stretched muscle, those that have had pregnancy they, they usually have stretched out muscle and by tightening their abdominal muscle they get a more of a corset tightening where they get tightening of the abdominal muscle so it's, it'll be more pulled back and they get a better figure because of those who have gone through an extensive weight loss they also can benefit from tightening up their abdominal muscle but it's something that we can see during the surgery how loose the muscle is and whether there is a separation of the muscle uh, called diastasis recti. So when we see that, it's basically it's, the, it's repaired at the same time. And uh, part of the same question was how far is the incision going to go in the tummy tuck? Basically, the panicula or the folding of the laxity of the skin is what determines the extent of the incision and some people is the incision is shorter and some is going to be longer based on how far their fold is and how far the skin laxity is if they have a fold that is farther and we keep the incision short then they're going to end up with a what we call it dog ear which is a, some excess skin on the side and most people will not be happy with that so we want to make the incision where that to, to remove the entire laxity including the sides and again that's determined by the extent of their fold. Another common question was uh, how long is the average surgery time for a tummy tuck? Some people may say I'll do a tummy tuck in two hours, two and a half hours, some say four, four or five hours but a fast surgery I would have to cut corners or not pay attention to a lot of the details that a tummy tuck really needs. My average tummy tuck cases obviously depends on the size of the patient. It's run somewhere between four to five hours because I like to spend a lot of time on the incision, a lot of the details of the surgery that takes a lot of attention. Uh, and I want to do a perfect job, not just a fast job. Next question was, uh, can you do surgery on people from out of state? Yes, we do get patients from other states as well as patients from other countries. But the most important thing is planning ahead and also allowing some time for recovery. I don't want to do surgery on a patient and has to leave in a day or two after surgery. That's not the best idea. I like to be able to take care of the patient for a few weeks. I would say that if they're coming from out of state or other countries, basically they, they need to allow some time to be close by uh, for their recovery so we can uh, take the appropriate care.
So we had a question from another lady regarding tummy tuck, what is your infection rate? I'm proud to say that not only my infection have been 99% free, but also our facility has been without an infection for the past, I would say seven to eight years. We pass our accreditation with flying color. There are certain protocol that we follow and uh, it's one of the things that all the do's and don'ts we are based around how to minimize the risk of infection and other complications. Please understand that infection is a possibility with any surgery and it can happen at any time. But there are certain protocol that we follow to minimize these infections and certain things that we as a surgeon can do and my staff can do and there are certain things that the patient has to follow after they go home because there are certain things that they can do to cause the infection later on as during the recovery time. So uh, we spend a lot of time with our patient explaining what to do, not to do before surgery, what to do and not to do after surgery and all these in, uh, instructions are geared to not only minimize the infection rate but also uh, minimize other possible complications that we know that may happen. Another thing we have full control of what type of patient is being done as at hospitals there are sick people and there are, you know a case of us may be done in the operating room before a patient goes for a tummy tuck. We don't have those things in the private surgery center. Everything is controlled, only clean cases are done here. So that minimizes infection as compared to hospital operating room as well. Dr. Kernion, what is the recovery time for a tummy tuck? How long can we plan on being out of work if we have a desk job? When can you return to the gym and lifting weights? And when can you do core exercises again? Well, the recovery time varies from person to person and also based on the type of work that they do, the, whether it's a physical work or a desk job. And another factor is whether a muscle placation or repair and tightening of the abdominal muscle was performed or not. That plays a big factor in their recovery time and the discomfort that they feel in the first week after surgery. But in most cases, basically most people are able to go back to a desk work in about a week. There's going to be some discomfort, maybe they need to take more breaks, but they're able to do a desk work in about a week. Most of my patients are very comfortable with doing that. Going back to exercises, I would say they need to wait about a month. Do regular exercises, very vigorous exercises, including lifting, that would probably be comfortable doing that in about two months and the only thing you need to wait on longer is on those that muscle tightening have been done and muscle placation have been done I would not want them to do any core exercises like sit-ups or crunches for about at least three months because we want those sutures to heal well and the muscles to get stronger before they exert pressure on those sutures. At three months is reasonable to wait. Can you sleep in the bed after surgery? Do you have to sleep in a recliner? How soon do you have to be up and walking? And do you need any special garments while recovering? Basically after uh, a tummy tuck, uh, most people feel a little bit tightness on their abdomen best and most comfortable position is in a recliner. A lot of the patients say, oh, I don't have a recliner at home, it's fine. I usually recommend them to put some pillows uh, in their back so their back is inclined and some pillow under their knee so their knee is flexed. That takes the tension off their incision and that's how they're most comfortable. As each day goes by, they're comfortable laying without an inclination of their bed or anything on their back. So they can go to a regular position as they're comfortable. Uh, some say, can I sleep on my tummy or can I sleep on my side? Yes, any position they're comfortable, they can sleep in. And as far as the garment, yes, there is a special garment uh, after tummy tag that everyone needs to wear. Everyone loves it because it gives them a more support. It also keeps the swelling 
to a minimum. Usually after I tell the patients they can stop wearing it. A lot of them they say, you know what, I feel more comfortable with it. So usually uh, I'll ask them to wear the garment for about a month after the surgery, but they don't have to wear it 24 hours a day. Uh, they can take breaks uh, for hours and hours, but uh, they need to wear it most of the day. The next question we were asked was, is there medications or products that are used after the surgery for the best outcome? And is there a special diet that we have to follow? Basically, uh, after surgery, there's some pain medication that are given to the patient for their comfort. I always ask them the first week they may need the stronger pain medication. And from the second week, they can resort to less aggressive pain medication like just Tylenol, regular Tylenol. People are comfortable with just regular Tylenol on their second week and all. We also have the patients on uh, prophylactic antibiotic. They some antibiotic after surgery just to prevent any possibility of infection um, and as far as uh, diet they can just go on regular diet obviously uh, the day of the surgery they need to go with more liquid diet and just take it easy as far as the volume that they ingest second day after surgery they can just be on regular diet whatever they desire uh, obviously, you still want to keep your weight and manage the weight, but they can be on regular diet. And as far as products being used in the incision, we recommend silicone-based dressings, like silicone strips are very effective to minimize the appearance of the scar or silicone-based paste that can be applied on the incision. Those have been shown to make an improvement, reduce the chance of keloid, hypertrophic scar, and minimizing the scar. As far as putting certain oil or not putting oil or the rest of the skin, that doesn't really matter. But these are something, the silicone-based dressings are something that have been proven to make a difference in the appearance of the scar, so I recommend that. Thank you for all your inquiries. I hope I answer all your questions. And if there are any more questions that come to your mind, please let us know. This is Dr. Karendian at DesiredBeauty.com. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I am so thankful that Dr. Karendian took some time to answer all of our questions. I could not have done that without you guys. So thank you, thank you so much. If any other questions came to mind while you're watching this video or you feel like you need a little bit more elaboration of certain questions, Drop your questions down in the comments below and while you're at it, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel so you can keep up with my journey to tech.